Starting a new section, uh, quadratics, graphing quadratics to be specific. And so rather than trying to write out all this front page for you with my, you know, kind of stylus, I have it written out and we'll just kind of go through it. So attributes of quadratics, standard form, if you look, is ax squared plus bx plus c, f of x equals that, where a can't be zero. a, b, and c are all uh, constants or coefficients. And it's, we always just go in descending order. And we'll, we'll deal more standard form in a few more lessons. Vertex form, which is the one we're going to be dealing with the most, y equals a times x minus h, the quantity squared, plus k. And if you remember back to our absolute value graphs, a, h, and k all act like they did at that point. a stretches and compresses and also tells you whether it reflects. h shifts it left and right and k shifts it up and down. And then because it's a quadratic, our parent function is f of x equals x squared. So these quadratics are parabolas. Parabolas are u-shaped, graphs that open up and down. y-intercepts, this is the point, and, and most of this is stuff we've gone through, the point where the graph crosses the y-axis. x must be equal to zero. To find your y-intercept, you can graph it, and see where it crosses the y-axis or plug in zero for x and solve. X-intercepts, these are the point or points where the graph crosses the x-axis. Y must be equal to zero in this case. So for y-intercept, x is zero, x-intercept, y is zero. These are also called the roots, zeros, and solutions of the equation. There can be zero, one, or two of these. And similarly, you can graph and see where it crosses or set the equation equal to zero and solve. Vertex, the coordinates of the point of change. This is our turning point. And so if you think about a parabola, looks something like that. The point of change means initially it's going, it's negative. The point of change is here where all of a sudden the slope changes to positive. And so that point of change, the turning point, where it goes from negative to positive or from positive to negative slopes, is our turning point or vertex. Maximum, this is when the vertex is at the top of the parabola. It only occurs when it opens down. It's the highest y value. It's not an ordered pair. So make sure you take note of that. Minimum is when the vertex is at the bottom of the parabola. This is the lowest value. This is when the graph opens up. And it's only one number. Axis of symmetry, we've talked about it with absolute value graphs. This is the line that passes through the vertex. It's very important to the graphing part. It divides the parabola into two symmetrical halves. The axis of symmetry for quadratic, for quadratic function is always x equals, and it is the x value of our vertex. So parabolas have symmetric points. This means there are two points that are equal distance from the axis of symmetry on your parabola. They are the same distance to the left and to the right. So when we think about our parabola, we have our axis of symmetry right down the middle. If we have two points here and here, they're the same distance away from the axis of symmetry that runs down the middle. Those are two symmetric points. Domain will be the all values, all the x values of the graph, farthest left to farthest right, and this is generally speaking all real numbers, and the range are all the y values on the graph farthest down to farthest up. And these will generally either have a, a positive infinity in it or a negative infinity, but not both. Okay? So now let's flip over our page and look at an example or two. All right, so we look at this first graph and we need to decide, does it open up or down? That's an easy question, it opens up. Where's our y-intercept? We look at it, it's right there. That's at zero, negative 12 is our ordered pair. And my son is in here again, so just excuse the interruption, Eddie. Please let me finish. 
the x intercepts you can see are Daddy, I want to help. I know. Right here and right here. Can I at negative six zero? Dad, can I help? You can watch. Watch you. And I can do the candle. At two zero. Dad, smell it. Mm-hmm. Does it smell good? So because there's two x intercepts, that means we also have two solutions. Our vertex is down here. That's wow. at negative 2, negative 16. I want to help. Can I, Just Dad? watch. Just watch. Oh, man. And we have a minimum at that value of negative 16. The minimum. Our axis of symmetry Booty. is equal to the x value of our vertex. Dad, yeah, I want to... I want to make something uh, out of So it's going to be right thing. there. Then I want to make That's one our movie. axis of symmetry. So symmetric points, we can pick any. We could pick this y-intercept at 0, negative 12. And find the other point over here. So these two points. So that would be negative 4, negative 12. They are both two away from the axis of symmetry. Our domain is all reals. From left to right, it's continuing on to infinity, left and right. The range, it's going to be closed at negative 16 because we have a minimum, and it goes all the way to infinity, or you could say y greater than or equal to negative 16. Either one works. Let's look at our second example. We'll see if my son will not interrupt us this time, but no promises. We'll do our best. This one opens down the y-intercept. So this blue dot here is where it crosses the y-axis. That is at 0, negative 1. And if you notice, the y-intercept, the x is always 0. X-intercepts, does it cross anywhere? Does it cross this line? Anywhere. No. So you'd say there are none. So how many solutions does that leave us with? You're right. Zero. Our vertex is also going to be zero, negative one. It's at the same point as our y-intercept. And that means we have a maximum at negative one right here. So that point is a lot of different things. It's the y-intercept, it's our vertex, it's our maximum, and our axis of symmetry, you can see, is going right down the x-axis, which is x equal to 0. So on this one, symmetric points, as I look at it, I'm going to pick right here and right here. You can see where the two the graphs meet. So 1 is at 1, negative 4, and then on the other side of x equals 0, negative 1, negative 4. Our domain, once again, all reals, because these are continuing on and on, out and out. Range, now, it starts, the lowest is negative infinity, and it goes up to negative 1, and it's closed at negative 1, open at negative 3, or y less than or equal to negative 1. And I hope that helps you with attributes of quadratics.